I know what you're all thinking. We're all outraged about the same thing today, right? Like, we can all just agree, going into the video, that this is absolute nonsense. How is it that Shadowgrange Archfiend is not on Magic Online? W what is this? This is absolutely embarrassing. But, oh, go home. You're drunk. Um, so I was planning on recording with a super spicy madness deck today, uh, and then I had to scramble to kind of rearrange my cube. So today we are going to be playing with Reeple Cheap's Black White Humans decklist instead. Um, so Reeple Cheap has been working on this decklist for, I don't know, maybe two or three weeks now, and a couple other people have put up some 5-0s with it. I believe Eddie Zamora, uh, kind of like Humans uh, Master, has uh, put up a 5-0 with this decklist as well. Um, and this is a little different from traditional Humans. So a lot of times right now, your traditional humans deck list will play things like Noble Hierarch and one of the recruiters in order to have a little bit more of a toolboxy approach and a lot of endgame options. This deck isn't looking to do that. This deck is much more aggressive. So we have this package of Champion of the Parish into Thalia's Lieutenant into General Kudro that really just puts a lot of power onto the board quickly. This version of humans is looking to disrupt and kill, period. Um, while a lot of other versions of humans are trying to interact with what the opponent is doing, say with cards like Reflector Mage, we are looking very minimally to interact. Um, and if you look at the mana base, like, you can kind of get that feel, right? Like, we have a whopping three copies of a Ganjo. We want to uncounterably get a creature out of the way, send a champion of the parish into the red zone, and get our opponent dead. We have a handful of disruptive elements in this deck, and I'm going to count Esper Sentinel in that category. Um, I think Esper Sentinel as a whole is a pretty medium caliber legacy card, it shows up in some decks, it does okay in those decks, but I think here it's going to be pretty good, because Esper Sentinel's card draw ability scales with its power, so when you are doing things like putting plus one, plus one counters on it with something like Athalia's Lieutenant or Luminarch Aspirant, or when you're growing it with Lords, Esper Sentinel's power is a little bit greater than it normally is. Also, this deck is so low to the ground that if your opponent is spending time playing around the Esper Sentinel tax, they might take three or more damage for doing so. And if you get an extra lightning bolt uh, worth of value out of a like white one drop, that's that's not bad, right? Um, so we we're going to have some amount of game versus the the blue decks just due to like the raw rate at which we're going and the fact that our creatures are going to be uncounterable off of Aether Vial or Cavern of Souls. Um, but we're, we also should be respectable versus combo decks. We have a fast clock, and we have disrupted elements like Thalia, Kite Sail Freebooter, and Sanctum Prelate. Uh, we're kind of rounding out the main deck in what I would kind of consider our flex slots. We have three copies of Brutal Cathar. This is just kind of another way to get stuff out of the way so that your creatures can enter the red zone. Uh, it can turn into a 3-3 first striker, which is kind of cool. Um, note that there are worlds where you can exile multiple creatures with a single copy of this. Um, I've never seen that come up, but it is theoretically possible. Um, as far as the sideboard goes, we're pretty targeted. Like, there's a lot of three, uh, three ofs here. Like, we, we know what we're looking to beat. We want to have a little extra removal. We want to be able to sweep small creatures that would clog up the board. We want to deal with Urza Saga slash Kappa Bullshit and we need to have some amount of additional stuff for combo. Because we're pretty good against combo once we make it to turn two, but we don't have things like Force of Will, Force of Negation in the main deck that can help us make it through turn one. All right, um, why don't we go ahead and just jump into the league? If you're new here and you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing, and if you're a regular, please throw me a like before this video begins. That's the easiest way to support my content for free, and the likes really matter this week since I took last week off. All right, let's battle. Okay, um, I don't think a double double Esper Sentinel hand is good enough to keep on the draw. I would have considered keeping this on the play. It's just too easy for my opponent to play around that. Uh, yes, I like 
this. How do I feel about the Aether Vial? The Aether Vial is medium right now. The Aether Vial becomes very good if I draw into gas and very bad if I don't. Uh, I think since my hand is heavy on the top end already, I'm just going to keep my three lands rather than throwing back a land. Okay. We get Delvered. Maybe. I mean, like, this could be other things like Sneak and Show, but when I see Volcanic Island right now, I'm absolutely thinking Delver. Okay. That improves the hand a lot. I think we're going to name Human. Throwing it out there. I have a very aggressive curve if I don't get Wastelanded. The hand becomes pretty awkward if my opponent has a Wasteland, and uh, real rough if my opponent has two. Uh, Alright, am I going aggro or am I going disruptive here? I want to go aggro at first. Yeah, let's uh, let's get in there and play these scaling things first. Okay, we are seeing a fetch. Oh, for a dress down. That's actually legitimately annoying. I lost out on a lot of power there. So we are playing against uh, the Jeskai control deck, which probably has like the Darset, Days Undoing sorts of nonsense. Okay, sure. Ooh, straight up Monastery Mentor, eh? I think I need to lead with Sanctum Prelate on one. A little awkward given that I just found Aether Vial. But I think I need to limit my opponent's options to make the game spiral out of control with Mentor. I think I am willing to attack in with both of these. Like, that Mentor being off the board is super cool for me. The issue here is that, like, Prismatic Ending is a thing, Teferi Bounce is a thing. Like, this is not guaranteed at all. Yep, Prismatic Ending. Alright, so my Sanctum Prelate is gone. And I eat 3 damage here. Opponent's already at 12, though. Oh, wow. That's really good. Yeah. Let's, uh... <laughs> Take Mentor off the board. Good stuff. So now I just get to crash in for six, and if my opponent doesn't have a source of plowshares, things get really messy. I like that. All right, there's a Teferi. Um, I just recast that. That is not actually going to accomplish as much as my opponent hopes it will. All right, yep. Yeah. So just do that. Take the Mentor out of the way. I think I get to ignore the Teferi, just go at my opponent here, and just crash in for eight. <laughs> just don't even block, just just roll over and die. Uh, okay. Folks, that, that felt like a really good deck there. That was so, so much pressure. Also, am I even sideboarding? How many, how many outs to a mentor do I have? I have these three as removal spells. I have these two as ways that just kind of dampen the power of Mentor. It doesn't actually get rid of it. Um, like, I can bring in some number of Source of Plowshares to stop a Mentor? How many Mentors is my opponent actually playing, though? Um, so I did a quick search on my opponent, and the last Jeskai deck they were seen playing didn't have any Mentors. Um, I am going to submit the game one deck again, I think, and then mine for some more information. Like, if my opponent is playing, a, like, a straight-up Stoneblade deck and they have Stoneforges I also have to deal with, then I probably need to be playing the Source of Plowshares. But if it's, like, just a couple of Mentors and then it's, like, the normal, like, slow Planeswalker bullshit and, like, Sharks or something, I'm not too worried about uh, boarding in the Swords of Plowshares. I have a real choice on turn one of like, do I play Champion or do I play Esper Sentinel? Or Mother of Runes at that. Wow. Uh, having Swamp here is super awkward. Super, super awkward, because it means I can't double spell easily on turn two. So, like, that always goes on human. I think I'm going to lead on Mom and not take the absolute highest aggro line that I could, but just kind of force my opponent to remove one of these. Like, you probably want access to Basic Swamp in this deck. It just happened. Oh, and the festivities. Wow, that, uh... Yeah. 
and, and this is going to be one of those situations where like having swamp costs me um double one drop this turn that's okay like it, it happens i'm not going to be mad about it so there is a world where i have to worry about a terminus being like two down that's no shuffle oh god am i just eating a murktide regent okay i mean i have a removal spell in hand if i draw a land which he did not um so i am going to want the swords to plowshares for post sideboard games here I think I think I want to kite sail freebooter this turn and just kind of check and see if my opponent Okay. Opponent has multiple different removal spells here. And a mentor. Uh this is rough. The second creature's real bad for me because I can't just like brutal cathar and then just be totally safe. I'm gonna tuck the Teferi here. Um I don't know how much my decision... Ah, no, I should have tucked the Source of... Ah! Tucking the Source of Plowshares is good because my opponent has to leave up more mana if they want to play around my mom, like, block protect line. Um, this damage, though. All right, so I know that Teferi's out of there, and then there's redundant copies of a bunch of these cards that I saw. Okay. That's what my opponent has, plus one mystery card. Yep. If I miss out on my land drop, I'm in a lot of trouble. That's almost good, but I don't have true white mana here. So that just becomes a land. So I do this. Arctide Regent kills me faster. And then I will hope to deal with the Mentor, either by being disruptive on board or by drawing into another thing that kills it. The, the double creature here was brutal. I th think I could have set myself up pretty well. To beat single creature. Um, by the way, correcting a comment from earlier, I don't exactly think that this is like the uh, traditional uh, like days undoing just guy control build anymore. This is kind of its own thing. Okay, sure. Eating this damage. Um, uh, Sanctum Pro is pretty damn good here. Because like I know about the Swords to Plowshares. So I am just shutting that off and then I can try to stabilize my board. The opponent might just fire off Source of Plowshares here to tap my Mother of Runes, yeah. Um, so I will give Protection from White. A second one. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, at this point, I don't think I'm winning. Just due to onboard power. I think I'm just too far behind. Like, my opponent plays any any spell, and then, like, these all are just huge. Working with a Narset. Oh, okay, so they do have a Narset package as well. Um, I'm going to look at what card they get from Narset and then concede another dress down. Okay, that's fine. All right, GG. Um, so given what I saw, I probably want some number of Swords of Plowshares. I can also consider Orzhov Pontiff for clearing tokens. Um, most of my cards here are pretty good, though. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what I am supposed to board out. Like, I really do want my Aether Vials on the play. I haven't seen sweepers from my opponent yet, other than and the festivities. I might need to go down a dis like a disruptive element or a lord or something. I don't know that I can go down on Kudros, because like Kudro is technically another way to answer a Merktide. Technically. Um so it is one of my slower elements. I don't know. Maybe if I am bringing in towards the plowshares to board out sanctum prelate because my opponent like i know my opponent has like prismatic endings and fairies and stuff that are keeping sanctum prelate from being a hard lock piece and i'm having trouble finding my cuts so i might just do something like this to get in more answers to creatures this still leaves me with 31 creatures which is a very very healthy number uh yeah this is a keep um i haven't seen a wasteland from my opponent yet so i think i'm fine with leading on cavern so that i don't lose a life here um, and I will just play the Aether Vial. Things become a little more interesting for what I do next turn. I probably just play the Champion of the Parish off the Aether Vial and then play like Thalia. But Esper Sentinel into Thalia is also super obnoxious. So like that could absolutely go either way. I'll probably just play the 
champion first since that's better against an end the festivities line. Um, I think I will go ahead and go with that. Yes. Champion in. I'm going to play this as a land. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think I'm going to go ahead and play that as a land. My individual points of life matter a lot when my opponent's threats hit in such large chunks. So like, it legitimately might be... Okay. Uh, it legitimately might be the difference between, like, a two- and three-turn clock here. All right. Um, I will go ahead and tick this up. I can put Bob in at some point. Um, I will go ahead and immediately draw my card. Because there are a cup. That's one of them. There are a couple of things that I would rather put in than Bob. And Thalia's Lieutenant was exactly the one that I had in mind. Because that grows the team out of and the festivities range. And now look at how much I'm hitting for here. I'm hitting for eight. My team is out. Yeah, my team is out of end the festivities range. Uh, absolutely, absolutely disgusting. This is turn three. What, I have five, eight, nine, ten, eleven damage in play on turn three? Uh, disgusting. I like this deck. Okay, um, my round two opening hand is a little light on action, but I have like Vial into Esper Sentinel into Wasteland. I think I'm going to keep this being on the draw. Like, I'm going to hope that, like, I draw into a piece of action or my opponent plays a non-basic land that I can wasteland. If either of those two worlds are true, I am perfectly happy with the hand. We now get to play the game of what kind of ponder deck is this. This is a combo deck I'm supposed to play Esper Sentinel on turn one rather than Aether Vial, probably. Um, don't think I am going to do that blind, though. Um, let's... Let's just jam my planes. Forgot to switch my art. No. I like my lightning planes. I honestly should just like sell all of my other planes on Magic Online so this stops happening. Okay, sure. Okay, so this is looking closer to a control deck right now than a combo one. All right, so this goes on human. Um, so now we get to do something kind of cool, right? So when this enters the battlefield, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each other human you control. And whenever human enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one, plus one counter on this, right? Um, so what you do is you cast this card, and with its trigger on the stack, you activate your Aether Vial. This means that your Thalia's Lieutenant puts a counter on Esper Sentinel, and Esper Sentinel puts a counter on Thalia's Lieutenant, which doesn't happen if you just put the Esper Sentinel into play first. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to be so mad if this is a Terminus. Uh, all right. I don't even get to draw a card off Esper Sentinel here, unfortunately. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, wow, I do? Seriously? Wild. Wow, I'm so surprised. So what, do you have, like, actual factual counterspell you're holding up? Um, am I supposed to tick this up? Or am I just supposed to leave this at 1 and do the same trick as last turn? I think I'm just going to leave this at 2 and do the same trick as last turn. Oh, I wish my wastelands were good, though. Well, can't have it all, right? So, yeah. Uh, for back to basics based reasons, I'm going to tap like this. Oh my god, I, I auto-yielded last turn. Oops. Alright, that's on me. I lose out on 1 plus 1 plus 1 counter for auto-yielding. Turn off auto yields. Okay, sure. And plus one plus one counter is relevant. Oh, uh, that's so annoying. Like, 100% on me. Oh, JK, the plus one plus one counter is not relevant. It, in fact, might have been optimal for me to not do that so that I ended up in this situation. Wild, right? Because, like, now it looks like I don't have a wonder up. I don't know, I, but I didn't, like, tick up the vial or anything. I don't know. Nothing Nothing matters if my opponent just uh, has another Terminus on top of their library. I'm not yielding to those anymore. All right, Vial goes up. Um, let's start with drawing a card off of this. Another Mother of Runes. Uh, so I'm ending up in this very awkward position where I'm absolutely getting ranched by another Terminus. All right. I think I am just going to accept that Terminus is going to absolutely stomp me. So that I can kill this Jace without tapping Mother of Runes. 
so that in the worlds where there is not another Terminus currently on top of my opponent's library, I'm just way further ahead. Opponent is tapping and untapping this island a lot. Okay, there's a Narset. That's fine. Like, Narset can dig for, like, a sweeper, which will be very good against me. Prismatic ending, sure. That can get rid of an Aether Vial. That's fine. Like, re resources that are spent on my Aether Vials, I'm totally good with. Uh, I don't like that I am leaning further and further into Terminus being good against me. But I also think I'm probably supposed to do this still. I choose target opponent. Yes, I will take your day's undoing. Absolutely. I just don't want my opponent to come back from that. Like, and just end up, like, drawing a, like, plan Narset day's undoing all in one go or something like that. I'm also not going to get greedy and attack for one with the Mother of Runes here. All right, goodbye, Narset. Um, and just quick note, the reason why I'm not super keen on just, like, snagging the Brainstorm here is my opponent is already at five lands. They're, like, a, a land drop just means that they can naturally cast a Terminus and sweep my board anyway. Um, yikes. That's rough. Oh, shit. Do they have Mystic Sanctuary in hand? Ah, shit. They had Mystic Sanctuary in hand, and I just didn't pay attention to that. Okay, that was on board. It held Kite Sail Freebooter. I couldn't have known to do this, but if I had held Kite Sail Freebooter, I could have worked towards a world where I try to, like, snipe a Terminus out of their hand in response to a Miracle Trigger. <sighs> uh, Alright. Yeah. My opponent gets the Days Undoing back. Yes, Aether Vial goes up. So, I will take out the Mystic Sanctuary. It's not the biggest deal in the world. Now it's a question of, like, do I want to put this into play, or do I want to hold this to answer a creature? I think I just need to put this into play and get a creature going. Uh, this, is, this is not the board state I want to be in. All right, Ponder is fine. Uh, so at this point of the game, it's my opponent drawing, like, a Narset that ends up being bad for me. Um, I am... Just going to go ahead and immediately wasteland and not give my opponent the option to use that mana on my turn. How am I looking in terms of EMCs? Uh, more twos than threes. We'll leave this on two for the time being then. Leaving it on two gives me the option to like draw a Thalia and do Thalia bounce block shenanigans as well. Although I guess on three I have the same technical thing with Kudro. Um, I'm quite behind right now. Like, I know I have more power on board, uh, but my uh, my opponent's top decks are currently scarier. Uh, sure, Force of Negation is fine. That That's just my opponent using that on one of the four targets in my deck. I don't think they super care about the Aether Vial specifically. Uh, yep, that's fine. Yep, they're just going to bounce that out of the way. Uh, and this gives me a reason to tick this up. Um, so I will do so. Or damage to an attacking or blocking creature. I don't need to make this land drop right now, but I know my opponent has a day's undoing, and if they go land drop into day's undoing, I would rather have this in play than in hand. So by that logic, I think I am just going to play it. I just like also haven't seen a creature from my opponent yet, right? How does this work? It becomes knight next turn. Okay. So I, it's not an end step trigger. I will go ahead and put this in. Yes. Brutal cut. Oh, it was already night. Sure. I forgot this. This continuously tracks. This isn't, um, this isn't like old transform. So this is still going to cost them three life. Um, but it's not taking the Teferi out of play. At this point, I will always know to this ether vial. That's not what I'm looking for. I will play it to thin a land out of my deck, and because as I've kind of already established, like I know my opponent either has or has access to Days Undoing, and I don't really want to be on the wrong side of that equation. Okay, okay there goes my Aether Vial, that's fine. Um, let's fetch out the other base stick here. 
Uh, so that I can cast all my theoretical cards through a Blood Moon or Back to Basics type effect. Alright, cool. Cavern of Souls. Alright, so there's an Uncounterable Thalia backed by Caracas. That's pretty legitimately annoying. Okay. There's just a plus. I can do some cute things. I don't like how many of my resources I have to use towards combating this Teferi. Yeah, I mean, I will, I will bounce the Thalia. At which point I will play a counterable champion of the parish into an uncounterable Thalia. And if my opponent sets me up for like a sick terminus situation, they set me up for a sick terminus situation. But I think I have to like play to the board. Like, every, every turn that my opponent just, like, keeps making land drops and spins cantrips together, it's just, like, closer and closer to me, um, just kind of eating it. Um, I also might need to play this Thalia pre-combat, because of, uh, Shark Typhoon. My opponent right now could make a 3-3 Shark that my champion would not trade with. No shuffle there. Oh, that's very good. Terminus is real bad, but I've said this every turn, um entire match so there's that all right so i'm gonna play my thalia don't think i'm gonna play the thalia's lieutenant prior to combat it's awkward if i trade for a shark though um uh, but like brainstorm terminus is just like good already uh in terms of a tempo setback i don't think i can make it better like that to ferry off the field or at least attempt to all right play scared around terminus get get got by shark typhoon like, that's the situation that I knew I was in, right? Um, so I unfortunately trade here. Right. And I'll play this so the Thalia's Lieutenant can actually attack next turn. Um, if I can get this Teferi off the board, I'm not in too bad of shape. But, like, my opponent is getting to the point where, like, they can assemble two cards that are good against me. Um, again, beating, beating the dead horse. I am terrified of Terminus. But I need to keep playing cards so that like this stuff grows. Try to take Teferi off board. Alright, I have succeeded in that. I am not going to just like bounce Thalia end of turn to get one plus one plus one counter on this. I'll breacher. Four mana. Okay. Um just end of turn days undoing. We both refuel. This this game's gonna get weird. Right, yep. Like if my opponent sets up a terminus here. They're probably in a favored position, even if I bounce this Thalia. But the next turn's still pretty good for me. All right, yeah, there is Terminus. All right, so I will bounce Thalia. All right. So my opponent gets their two for one. I get to vomit cards. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I'll have six mana. Two of my things can be uncounterable. If they just have, like, Narset into Days Undoing here, um, it's absolutely fucking brutal. A source of plowshares, that's fine. Under Cure. And that's a shuffle, which is good. Don't want my opponent setting up Terminus. Like, if I vomit my hand and my opponent Terminus, it's just, it's just so, so bad for me. Alright. Mm. I'm gonna wasteland the Scalding turn. If there's a Terminus on top of the library, I want to know right now. Okay, there is a fetch. I have cleared that. I am good with giving up that value to just ensure that I am not about to get terminus. All right, now I have five mana for the rest of the turn. It's gonna be Thalia. Uh, since I have two Thalias in hand, I don't need to leave up Caracas. So I will play a champion. I will play an uncounterable Thalia, and I will play a Thalia's lieutenant and just kind of a uh, pump yield team here. Um, I have Theoretical Lethal next turn with uh, playing General Kudro, because that's going to uh, effectively give me plus four power. All right, there's the Narset activation. Finding a Prismatic Ending that can get rid of Thalia for two mana. And unlock a bunch of what my opponent can do with the rest of their turn. Yep. I, I kind of expect my board is going to be in a bad state at this point come the end of the turn. All right. Three mana. Am I getting days undoing? Oh, wow. Main main phase shark typhoon. Is that like you just have the days undoing already? Yeah, okay. You just have the days undoing already and you're trying to get some value. Okay. 
Um, not great for me. Uh, let's reboot her and see what we can do with this current situation. Oh my god. Um, yeah. I think at this point, I'm, uh, I'm going to do this. I, 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 I don't think at this point I am going to come back from this, like, my opponent has a full grip, triple removal spell situation, plus another Shark Typhoon. I, I don't think that's happening. Um, unfortunately, I don't really think my deck gets better after sideboarding here. Um, I don't even think I am going to sideboard. I don't really have things that are good against control decks. Like, there, there's nothing like, say, a Gideon or a Cataclysm that you might see out of DNT here. Um, like, I can play Orzhov Pontiff just as, like, I am trying to get over the finish line right now. Um, but I really don't want to be playing against Terminus. Like, having to play against Terminus while also having to, like, live in fear of, like, Shark Typhoon dominating combat is rough. Like, I could get rid of Mom to be better against Terminus, but then I get worse against some other things. Um, I don't really want Double Brutal Cathar in the hand. Um, Esper Sentinel is a great turn one play, as is Mom. My Wastelands are medium minus in this matchup. I don't think this hand is aggressive enough to really take advantage of being on the play. Whereas this hand very much is. Um, I do feel super awkward about this basic swamp in the deck. Um, I think there's like two fetch lands in the deck, if I remember correctly. You get value in having a basic swamp for things like Ghost Order and whatnot, but like playing double white one drop is something that like absolutely matters. I don't know. Uh this is this is the sort of thing that I can't figure out in a single league. Okay, so they fetch Tundra so that they can potentially just, like, ponder into Terminus. Uh, and, like, I, I am the build-on-board pressure deck with multiple creatures, and my opponent is the sweep-everything-in-one-horrific-go deck. I always play Swamp, and it's a little harder. I honestly think I'm just going to play Champion this turn. It's not mana-efficient, but, like, my hand doesn't really exist in a way that's mana-efficient right now. In the world where I don't just eat a Terminus immediately, this is a lot, like an absolute shit ton of damage. All right, so my current fear is Terminus is the top card of my opponent's library right now. I am going to play towards the world where that is not the case. Yeah. Force of Will happening is great for me. Okay, my opponent is going to eat a champion here. Uh, so I get a whopping one damage this turn. Uh, my opponent is now ahead. Like, my opponent can now play, like, a 3-drop Planeswalker that I can't just immediately check. Yep. Um, and, like, now we're, we're, now we're seeing this Swamp problem again, right? Like, I cannot double creature this turn because of Teferi. I also probably need to play the creature that grows and that can potentially kill Teferi through a plus next turn rather than Esper Sentinel. Um, Swamp might lose me this game. I don't know, or it might keep me from getting two creatures Terminus at the same time. Uh, you know. It's a thing. Esper Sentinel, champion, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. If I lose one of these creatures to a Terminus, I want to lose the other champion, I think. Rather have the Esper Sentinel stick around. All right, let's fire this off at Teferi. No. Not having stuff. Okay. Um, I am at least trading for a creature. That's worth something. All right. Now, if I draw a land next turn, I can double creature. Again, though, Terminus is just so horrifying here. Like, I have a Sanctum Prelate. If I put it on six, then I just, like, keep myself exposed to a handful of removal spells. Ugh. Yeah, I do not want to play against Terminus with this deck. Just full stop. Okay. The opponent is looking for Force of Will or a blue card there. Cool, it entered play. Now, I'll send this at Teferi. My opponent will potentially try to trade, and I'll file in Esper Sentinel and come out ahead this combat. Again, though, if Terminus is on top of my opponent's library, I'm fucked. <laughs> and I think that is going to be the case at pretty much every moment this game. All right. Bob gets booted out of play. Okay. All right. I mean, that's good. Can I, can I cast that? Can I, can I reasonably cast that card? 
Or am I supposed to wait a turn to where it's uncounterable? I know my opponent has left some Force of Wills in deck. It wouldn't surprise me too much if some of them have been boarded out, though. I want to have General Kudro Caracas Vile going, which makes me want to not cast this counterably. I think I will go for this. It's it's awkward, though. Um, but I think I need to try to win this game. Drag dragging this match on feels horrible for me, because, like, Terminus into Mystic Sanctuary is a thing. My opponent has so many cantrips to set things up. Yep. Got a whole breacher out of that, so that means my Esper Sentinel isn't dying in combat if I attack with it. Alright, so there's there's the tax paid. Now it's a question of like how scared am I of like second hull breacher or second shark typhoon? If I lose the Esper Sentinel, it's annoying, but I think I am very clearly the aggressor in this matchup. I don't know that I can hold back. Eh, okay. All right, so are you Shark Typhooning now? Right, it is It is second Shark Typhoon. Yep. So top of my opponent's library is now fresh. I am going to take my one point of damage here. Uh, again, I get further exposed to Terminus for doing so, but I, I think every point of life matters here. I am just trying to limp across the finish line. Uh, this matchup feels really tough. And, uh, magic ending on Bob. EE. -E. Okay, I mean, that that was four mana that I ate up. That's not the end of the world. File goes up so I can put in Kudro. My opponent basically always chump blocks, right? I miss two damage if they don't chump block. Uh, so awkward. My deck wants me to play things out at sorcery speed. And my opponent... The, the play pattern against my opponent's deck is supposed to be like, oh, I can eat something from their graveyard. Um, I will eat a source of plowshares. All right. Um, anyway, finishing the thought. And my opponent's deck makes me want to sandbag my creatures for as long as possible. But the more I sandbag my creatures, the more time my opponent has to find the things that are like very, very much going to beat me. Three mana, our set. That's currently fine. What are you getting? Ponder is fine. It's when my opponent, like, ponders into Brainstorm plus Terminus that I'm in trouble. I don't think I mind a single removal spell here. All right, that's no shuffle, which is horrifying. All right, that is a prismatic ending. My opponent is at eight. I have seven power. Any creature gets me the kill here. All right, I get a redraw towards a creature. Oh, wait, hold on. No, I don't. Eh. And if they have another source of plowshares, I am in trouble. I think I need to split here. I think I need to kill Narset and attack them for four. Can't let them take another look here. All right, now that Narset's out of play, I can go ahead and do this. All right, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, I'm scared. An ending? Snapcaster Mage. Okay, I ate that Swords to Plowshares, but there's a Prismatic ending in there now. I don't have another Human to Violin to stop this. Oh, are they, oh they're going for Ponder. Okay. I thought they were going to go for a Prismatic ending, use that to take this off board, and then just chump block to get through the next turn. Uh, Alright, that's no shuffle with that Ponder. All right, that's a prismatic ending. That's fine. There's two humans, right? Yep, and power four or greater. All right. My opponent gets to chump block Snapcaster for a turn. Go to this file. Yeah, I'm not even going to play that pre-combat. Crash in for four. All right, my opponent takes the chump block. Um, I will play Thalia's Lancers. Or not Thalia's Lancers, Thalia's Lieutenant. Because this lets me work towards removing these removal spells from my opponent's graveyard. Now, in the case of a follow-up Snapcaster, I can bounce Kudro, replay Kudro, remove the target. I also have a line where I bounce Kudro and move a Thalia, move a counter to Thalia's lieutenant instead of Kudro. Sure. All right. What do you have? 
Okay. That's annoying. Do I bounce Kudro in response and move a counter to Thalia's lieutenant? I think I do. Uh, let's do this in a particular way. Let's activate Aether Vial, holding priority. Bounce Kudro. Okay. I eat a source of plowshares there. That's fine. That was going to happen post Blood Moon anyway. Not use Aether Vial's ability. Okay. All right. There's a Bob. Always yield to this now. Crash in for two. Opponent goes to one. Opponent can no longer hard cast a Terminus from hand. Opponent has one card. I have two lethal threats in play. I think I'm good. We have to do another game. I think I'm favored in this other game um, based on clock. I can win faster than my opponent can in these games that go super, super, super long. But I think my opponent's deck generally is favored against me. So my current question is, do I want to play Swords to Plowshares in order to make it harder for my, my opponent to physically win the game in seven minutes? Very possibly. I don't really like Brutal Cathar, but at the end of the day, it's a 2-2, sometimes a 3-3 that attacks, and Swords to Plowshares doesn't attack. I feel awkward about Kitesail Freebooter letting my opponent, like, store cards for, like, terminus space reasons. I also feel awkward about, like, some of the stuff that just, like, is supposed to sit on the board and accrue value versus the Terminus deck. My opponent will physically have less time to set up, though, so, like, that's a thing. Kitesail Freebooter can also snipe Terminus. Um, I think I, I think I am just going to resubmit the game one configuration, but I'm very unsure about that. Um, I will keep this hand. It's a little awkward, but it has a decent amount of gas. Oh, I will wasteland the shit out of that land. Absolutely. Just 100% of the time I am taking that land. On turn one, doesn't matter what I draw, not even if it's Aether Vile. Yeah, goodbye. That's a strong start for me. And that's the that's the downside of like playing an early tundra to try and set up a uh terminus. I'm going to try to hold off on playing this marsh flats for a turn or two. Um like I have Blood Moon to be concerned with. So like I need to be cognizant of that and like I potentially need to fetch out a basic planes that I don't get Blood Moon to next turn. Um, I guess the alternative, though, is just doing this. I have three black cards in hand. In event of Blood Moon, I still have three castable cards, one of which is a Dark Confidant. If I had any other black source, I would not play like this. Okay, that was good enough to get a Force of Will. Okay, there's red mana. Days Undoing. Okay, we're, we're just resetting. Sure. In the case of a reset here, I think I just want to get this Aether Vial into play and then play a card of some kind that taxes either Thalia or just like Freebooter take a peek at their hand. Um, I think Thalia makes things the most awkward for them. Um, I'm using time more slowly than my opponent is, but they are still ahead on clock. Prismatic ending? Pris oh, prismatic ending on that. Okay. I'm going to bash in for two. Put my opponent to 15. I think I'm going to use Kite Sail Freebooter to get a feel for what my opponent has. All right, just swords it immediately. Okay. Okay, opponent does have a Blood Moon. That's rough. Um, I'm going to continue to play to the board then. The Blood Moon is sort of like mutually assured destruction for both of us. It's better for my opponent than for me, because like they can just Blood Moon and then play two Shark Typhoons in a row, uh, and that's pretty bad for me. Yeah, and they are just going for that. Of I need E on one. Brutal. Alright. There's my Bob. That gets Force of Willed. Oh, it doesn't get Force of Willed. Crazy. Uh, bash in for three. <laughs> mom's, mom's time is limited. All right, sure. My opponent can make a 4-4 shark at any point. Okay, they're going to sweep with that. Sure. All right, another bob. Okay, uh, they can make a 2-2 shark, which means my Thalia attack is safe. Yeah. All right. Opponent's at 10. I'm going to try to use another bob here to dig me towards relevant things. 
All right, so my opponent's going to cycle a Shark Typhoon in response. And then we'll see if this gets forced or not. All right, it does. It doesn't. Now, I can't use a Ganjo here because this requires white mana, which I do not currently have. I am trying to draw towards one of my two planes. All right. Need you to do some work, Bob. Not what I'm looking for. Um, I know my opponent has that other Shark Typhoon. Um, yep. I think I'm just dead. I am A-okay if I draw a white source, but I have two. Now, so this happens. Oh, yeah, it's a 5-5 five, five shark. Like, my my game has stalled out. Um, yeah. D despite being nearly a monocolored deck, we don't have that many basics because, like, we're trying to fit in aggressive cards like a Ganjo's, or not a Ganjo Castle, uh, Seat of the Empire. All right, that's a prismatic ending. I think my opponent just turns both of these sideways and becomes the beatdown. Like, I die to that a huge portion of the time. Basically, every world where I don't draw a planes, uh, which is this timeline. Uh, so, unfortunately, I am dead here. Uh, GG's. Yeah. So, like, only having access to a single fetch land, so that, like, if I had wanted to play my black cards, I had to get swamp was really awkward for this. And, like, that was something that I, like, I knew the Blood Moon was going to be very good against my hand. Uh, and, like, as predicted, it was. Right, um, I'm going to be keeping my opening hand here. We have a Cavern of Souls to make my initial plays uncounterable. And I have a nice curve of, like, Asper Sentinel into Thalia into Freebooter um, with a little bit of wiggle room. I need more land based on this hand, and it's a little awkward if I get Wastelanded initially. Cloud Post. Um, Thalia attacks for more damage. I am just going to play Thalia first here, I think, over Freebooter. Um, it's not like either one of those hands, or sorry, either one of those cards is particularly fantastic. Um, I basically have the wrong sort of hand for this matchup. Like, in this matchup, I just want my super aggressive, um, like, Champion of the Paris based hands more so than anything else. Um, yeah. I think I want a Kite Self Rebooter next turn. I want to kind of hold off on playing that until, like, right before the critical turn, if at all possible. Um, I just... I, I need to reduce my opponent's life total as close to zero as possible as quickly as possible. Oh, it's Eldrazi! Rather than, uh, just straight Tron. Okay. I mean, Walking Ballista's good. So, do I want a Brutal Cathar pre-combat? Is the question here. My Brutal Cathar mid pre-combat, like, my opponent kills one of these two creatures, and I get in for either six or five damage this turn, as opposed to probably three. I don't know. I, I don't mind saving this Brutal Cathar if possible. There are absolutely bigger fish to fry here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and crash in, and we'll see what my opponent does. Like, they can block Kudro, kill Thalia, or something like that. Yeah, sure. Or block Thalia, kill Esper Sentinel. Same thing. Alright. I get in. 3 damage. And then... I think it is better to just ignore my Aether Vials for the time being. Just take a quick peek at my opponent's hand. Yeah. Take that Walking Ballista out of Graveyard. Oh, fuck me. Okay. Uh, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7. My opponent gets to all his dust no matter what next turn. Two, four, five, six, seven. Uh, geez. That's rough. Um, I guess I will just take the Karn out of the way for the time being. Ugh. Alright. That's a bad draw for me. That makes the aggro finish further away. So there's the first all is dust. I am going to bounce Kudro. It's less mana efficient than bouncing Thalia. But uh, we're past the point where the Thali attacks super matters. Hello, does this matter? Uh, it, like, technically matters, but it doesn't matter that much. Junk a Cloud Post. Am I supposed to play an Aether Vial here before this Chalice comes down? It eliminates that option. Now, Karn's coming. Uh, this is just awkward, though. Because 
my opponent just like plays another all is dust and I lose this Kudro, I lose my recursive threat. Um, I think they're just playing card in this turn though. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry, I forgot to mute for that one. Okay, there's the Karn. Karn just pluses. All right, so I think I'm more or less obligated to hit Karn as a starting point. Uh, from here, it's really awkward because like I know my opponent has an all is dust. My opponent currently does not have any creatures. I can't really play out this because then I drop Caracas, so that means I'm supposed to play out a Champion of the Parish. Because if I don't, I'm not threatening to kill the Karn. Um, just, it's just awkward. Also going to take this opportunity to play out an Aether Vial, even though it doesn't do anything right now. Um, there's also worlds where I just have to like be afraid of like an Ensnaring Bridge or a Mycosynth Lattice or something coming out in the not too distant future. All right, so it costs my opponent four life to cast that all as dust. Oh, sure, fine. Uh, X is chosen as three. I bounce my Kudro. Um, I think this is a this is an okay concession point. I'll take my draw and just make sure something doesn't change my mind. But I don't really have something like Skyclave Apparition that is just gonna like take these out of the battlefield immediately. All right, yeah, there's the Mycosynth Lattice off the Karn activation. Um, so that just locks me out of spells as of next turn. Ugin destroys whatever I play. Yeah, we we had the wrong sort of hand for this matchup. I I need I need aggro hands. All right, uh, Mother of Ruins is very bad in this matchup. That's that's coming out. That's my my starting point boarding position. Sanctum Prelate is awkward because you have to play this guessing game between six and seven and four. Um, it might end up staying in the deck just because I don't have that many things to bring in. I, I will probably bring in Pontiffs as a like pseudo lord to buff the team and kill my opponent sooner. Um, from there I will probably just play a Kataki because I think Kataki is better than Mum. Um, Kataki is not exactly fantastic. It can do things sometimes. Um, I think it's better than Swords to Plowshares. Um, at least based on what I saw that time. I, I did not see Thought Not Seers and Reality Smashers that game, which make me want to have Swords to Plowshares. Um, this hand's fine. It is not my ideal hand, but it has a good mix of aggression and utility like i have a thalia's lieutenant to pump the team i have a wasteland for the first cloud post effect like i i do relevant stuff with this hand um it becomes a little awkward if my opponent has pithing needle for multiple reasons it becomes very awkward if my opponent has two pithing needles one for aether while one for wasteland all right there's an urza saga um not the card i intended on wastelanding but probably the card that i am just going to wasteland yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and take that out of the way. And upkeep ball, put in an Esper Sentinel. I don't think my opponent's playing green based on what I saw, but, like, I've gotten got by Force of Vigor enough times to just, like, try to play around that card when I'm thinking, oh, oh, okay, sure, absolutely. All right. Operation Wasteland My Opponent's Only Land is a go. Um, strange keep from my opponent if they just immediately folded to a Wasteland. Um, Asper Sentinel into Bob is a good start. This is not the aggressive hand that I want. Do I mulligan this? No, I think I have too many draws that improve this hand. Like, Wasteland, Champion, Kudro, Thalia's Lieutenant, all really improve this hand. And I can probably take two draws to find any of those. Grim Monolith, uh, that's horrifying for me. Uh, that's horrifying for me. Uh, basically, I wouldn't have beaten this start no matter what. Uh, that's insane. Alright. Cavern. Human. Esper Sentinel. Uh, and my opponent can, like, play something very big and very dumb this turn. If they don't, I can Kite Sail Freebooter it out of their hand. Look at their hand and then try to stop it with Sanctum Prelate. Okay. Um... See how bad this is. So this is five, six mana, down to five, up to eight. Yeah, so like Ugin can hit play this turn, for example. Okay, there's the untap. The good news is I get to draw a card. The bad news is my opponent has produced an Ugin on turn two, and I don't think I can possibly beat that. Like, 
I have no cards in this deck that remove an Ugin, right? Yeah, I have no Council Judgment or Equivalent. I'm not at the point where I can play multiple creatures and deal with this. I have no no Pithing Needles. I'm I'm just not built to beat this. My opponent just gets the plus and kill every creature that I play for the rest of the game. Uh, GG's. Uh, it would not have mattered if I kept an aggressive hand here. Uh, literally, no matter what hand I had, it would not have beaten this hand from my opponent. Hey folks, Phil here. Um, please consider throwing me a like on the video or a comment on the video if you've made it this far into the video. It's really important this week as I kind of uh, restart my position in the algorithm after taking a week off of making content. Uh, okay, that's it. Back to the show. Um, round four opening hand is a little bit awkward. I have like all the gas in the world, but if this land gets wastelanded, the hand's garbage. I think I keep. Okay. Um, are we playing against a Kappa deck? Maybe. Also, just could be like a Delver deck of some kind that has baubles. Um, so I don't get Wastelanded and like not get a chance to play one of these cards. I think I'm just gonna lead on Wasteland here. All right. This should give us some real information about uh, what's going on. All right. Uh, it is Delver. I am going to have to Wasteland that Wasteland so my I don't lose my Cavern. Um. This is very awkward for me. Now, like, this goes on human. And if my opponent has a follow-up wasteland, I am immediately dead. No no recourse. Okay, it looks like my opponent is just crashing in for one. And playing another Delver. Okay, cool. I drew mana. I get to play real magic. I grab planes here, I think. Slightly awkward. And that, like, Wasteland is already good against me. Maybe I should lean in more and just grab Scrubland. That way, if I get Wastelanded, I don't lose access to the bobs. I'm going to do that. I am going to play an uncounterable Thalia here. My opponent has one land, and this makes it pretty awkward for them if they've got, like, Force of Will uh, type effects or cantrips. Uh, it's rough for me if these Delver flip, and I don't end up finding my third land drop. Um, but that world did not come to be. I believe I am going to go with Uncounterable Mother of Runes here, even though it is not mana efficient. And I'm also just going to hold back in case the Delvers don't flip. Um, so what I'm looking to set up is Mother of Runes into Kite Sail Freebooter to hold the ground. Uh, because these Delvers are a real threat. Okay, nice. That goes on human, and now I can start working on all my opponent's stuff. All right. So this removes one of these to start with. All right. I will crash in for two. I'll hold up protection from lightning bolt. And then we can potentially like do some flip-flopping back and forth here um, in order to flip this. OK, so how does this work? Player casts at least two spells during their own turn. OK, I can't really do that right now. Um, can I take another hit from Delver? Probably. Yeah, I think I can take another hit from Delver here. Uh, actually, is it better to just aggro finish here? How quickly do I need to try to end this game? Because I can just like play Thalia's Lieutenant this turn. Uh, I think I'm. I think I'm in the control deck right now. I'll stay in the control role. Let's Sanctum Prelate. Uh, you may absolutely brainstorm in response. We're gonna come down. Got off the one drops. I will bash in for five. Then next turn, I will play Kite Sail Freebooter, kind of hold the ground, and try to finish things off. If I can double spell, that's even better. Oh, cool. Uh, Brutal Cathar. Fantastic. Uh, opponent not wastelanding me um, has worked out well for me this game. Oh, my God. That entered on the night side. I just lost myself this game if that Delver flips. Oh my god. I'm not used to that interaction. Fuck. Uh, I just punted an... Like, unlosable game if this Delver flips. Cool. That's on me. That's very frustrating. Alright, um, these come in. Pontiffs maybe come in. If pontiffs are removal spells sometimes. Maybe Pontiffs are too slow on the draw. I have to get used to these not being in a Strahd transform werewolves. Um, what's my other cut? Go down one freebooter, I think. Alright, I, I, I punted that one. That's on me. 
Um, this is another awkward hand where if I get wastelanded, I'm just going to lose. All right, land, mom, go. Okay, bulk into bolt. Okay, now that I have that, I think I am comfortable just like throwing out the wasteland immediately. All right, mutually assured destruction. I accept. Uh, Ganjo is an okay draw. I think I'm favored here. Let's see if my opponent has a creature. They do. Comes. Oh, never mind. All right. Let's go junk that. I'm going to wait till their upkeep so that this can't be force of negationed. I'm going to go ahead and take that out. Okay, opponent still is making land drops impressively. Bulk, Wasteland, Scalding Tarn, Flooded Strand. Alright, no shuffle. And I'll play a Thalia. Um, I'm scared of Murktide right now. Eh. I need to draw a land for Brutal. Okay, cool. Cool. Not, not Murktide. I, I, I guess it would have been a small Murktide. It's mostly, mostly lands in my opponent's 9-card graveyard. Um... Really wanted a land drop there. Um, but, like, we're on a, like, we're wastelanding each other game. So, like, that that is what it is. Okay. That's all, it's so much land. Okay. That's a three-mana ponder. Uh, wow. The four-card hand where I can't play any of my cards. Rough. So I'll whack my opponent for three. If my opponent drew fewer lands this game, my position would be so good. Um, but that is just, like, not the case. Like, oddly, I kind of need them to have their, like, expressive iteration type cards that I can tax. Alright, so my opponent just pays for that. I really want them to remove my Thalia so that I can just play the other ones that are stuck in my hand. Ugh. Uh, not what I'm looking for. Like, I wanted to get this Prelate down on one before my opponent can just, like, unlock a bunch of the cantrips that are in their hand. Alright, they found a Misty. That means they also found a creature. Wow, they have to shock, because they've gunked a couple of volcanic islands already. Uh, yeah. I, uh, can't deploy any of these guards. I mean, I'll attack for two. Opponent's at five. I am, I am not in immediate danger of dying, but... I am in immediate danger of falling behind to the point that I'm not going to recover. It's not going to take a lot. Like, one bobble or one murktide turns my opponent's clock into something that's very real. I need, 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 need to hit a third land this turn, or I think I lose the game. If I hit my third land, I can Thalia. God damn it. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is awful. So Thalia turns off Force of Will, and then I get to play Esper Sentinel as a further taxation effect. But I am probably taking 11 damage this turn, so even if I remove the Merc Tide, like, life's bad. Sure, that's all fine. I don't know. There's there's worlds where I can, like, do some sort of, like, general Kudro aggro finish if my opponent... Uh, yikes. Gets too aggressive in attacks. Now I can't even, like, do a sort of, like, Swords of Plowshares type thing. Alright. I take 11. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be dead if my opponent flips Delver, and they have Lightning Bolt. Okay, so I guess... I guess I can attack with both of these, and if my opponent doesn't block, they die to Kudro. Let's send them in. Oh. Really? Really? Okay. Dunk a bobble. Alright, and there's lethal damage. Uh, we take those. Alright, I punted one, and I think my opponent punted one back. So, uh, hope game three is better. I go ahead and, uh, whack the submit button. I don't think I'm gonna make any changes. Like, I can consider the other freebooter on the draw just as another flyer. I can try to combine with Mother of Runes, but I don't know. Um, medium quality hand, double silent clearing is rough. I like that I have a removal spell. I like that I have a Sanctum Prelate. I like that I have a Wasteland. I think I'll keep it. I'm not, like, ecstatic about it, but I don't know that it's worth going down another card. Okay, there's now infinite ways to play this hand. 
I think I am going to attack my opponent's mana here since I have three lands. Um, they have a they have a one one in play right now. Like this will grow. This will be annoying. But my opponent kept a mana light hand in game one, and if they end up in that situation again, I'm pretty good with what I just did. Okay. So now, like, do I source the plowshares this immediately? I think I wait and do it around days and just play this this turn. If this gets dazed or bolted, it's, like, not the end of the world. The thing about leaving this in play is that it, like, fuels a Merktide Regent. But if I end up being able to answer a Merktide Regent with Swords of Plowshares instead of just a Dragon Rage Channeler, I'm pretty happy with that interaction. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Leaving the Dragon Rage Channeler in play is a little awkward when I do have double Silent Clearing as my lands, though. Yeah. So this, this is now a 3-3. Three, three. Um, so I'm going to end up in one of these awkward situations where, like, I potentially answer this and then get got by a Merktide, or I take a bunch of damage from this, living in fear of a Merktide. Not happy with this situation. I'm going to go ahead and try and remove that and get on board. Um, again, though, Merktide Regent, this turn is very bad. If I get another turn first before a Merktide goes down, like, I think I can be okay. But Merktide happening this turn would be very, very, very bad for me. Okay, sure. Ponder's fine. Um, so now I can play this game of, like, which one of my cards do I want to deploy. So I don't mind this. This means that I don't have to repeatedly take silent clearing damage. All right. I'd like to play Kudro around days. Kudro is a way to... An awkward way, but a way to answer Merktide Regent. Happy with that decision. Opponent eats one damage. Okay. Alright. Hell yeah. I just want to draw a card this turn. I can just draw a card and play Thalia's Lieutenant rather than just playing Kudro immediately. I think I'm good with that. Draw. Cavern. Human. Thalia's Lieutenant. My opponent almost certainly has a removal spell of some kind if they're not playing creatures. Like, I guess they can have a bunch of counter spells that are awkward for them. All right, well, let's attempt three damage on in here. Ooh, wow, Snapcaster Mage. Sure, that's fine. A little bigger than normal Delver. I guess we've reached the point where, like, the Delver decks are trying to get ahead in the mirrors. Reasonable. Um, I will not take... Do I take that trade? Like, my Thalia's Lancers is a better card, but I am at a much lower life total. Actually, I will take that trade. Um, it gives my opponent a two-for-one with Snapcaster, but whatever. Oh, wow, that's a very good draw. I'm quite happy with that. All right, Cavern on Human. Again, I am playing in this world where my opponent having a Merktide Regent is going to be incredibly awkward for me. Try to take that out. Doing this line means that my Kudro is vulnerable to a Lightning Bolt effect in a way that otherwise might not be. What do I not want my opponent to Snapcaster back if they have another one? Press of Iteration at this point. Okay. Mystic Sanctuary. Okay, sure. All right. Everything has gone wrong. Uh, again, though, I don't think I can hold back much here because I am so afraid of Merktide Regent killing me in two turns. Um. Wow, I'm just taking a lightning bolt to the face here. Grr. Let's go ahead and cycle this silent. <laughs> Yikes, okay. Um, so I, I have just bottomed out here, unfortunately. Um, do I play this now? Probably. Because there's some lines next turn where I draw like a Thalia, where I like play uncounterable Thalia, bounce Thalia, play uncounterable Thalia, swing in for three, and then that's a real amount of damage where that can happen. All right, there's my freebooter from my champion. Okay, no, my freebooter gets answered in response. So, thanks. And the festivities, force of will, meltdown. Get rid of this. So my opponent's meltdown is dead. There and the festivities currently doesn't have text. Their force of will currently doesn't have text. I am in the better position here. I think my opponent should have held that for a brainstorm potentially. Am I fine with this? Two plus one plus one counters on champion, permanently putting it out of range of a lightning bolt killing it. 
but then it turns on my opponents and the festivities because they can kill this with it. I can I can wait a turn, but it might just be better to do this and just like get my damage in now. All right, crash in for four. This card's out of lightning bolt range. It will be very difficult for my opponent to remove minus like a Merktide Regent in combat. I'm really surprised my opponent boarded in Meltdown for four Ether Vials. Okay, yep, so they are going to go ahead and uh, just junk that creature. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm going to assume that Meltdown is now gone. That may or may not be accurate, but it doesn't feel like that's a card my opponent should have kept in this position. So I, I crack in for a Lava Axe worth of damage. My opponent... Okay, so they reveal the Meltdown to flip Dalver. I'm on a three-turn clock. My opponent's on a three-turn clock. They get the first attack here. I guess if I attack with Mom... Uh, they're on a two-turn clock, so I probably have to attack with Mom. That's unfortunate. Don't want to do that. I think I have to here. Uh, so I, I'm dead to a Lightning Bolt. So my opponent can draw Bolt or any number of cantrips for Bolt, and I die. Okay, yep. So that kills my Mom. Is my opponent attacking? All right, my opponent is not attacking. They have to chump block to stay alive. Good. This is a weird pause. Junk's an attacking or blocking creature. Cool. Am I supposed to use this on a Delver so that my champion can't ever die to a Lightning Bolt? I don't think... No. Because if my opponent had Lightning Bolt, I would be dead. So the answer is no. Guess I'll play a Marsh Flats. I don't ever intend on using it, but I guess I will play it. Alright. My opponent needs, like, a Murktide Regent. Alright. Now, this is only attacking or blocking creature, so I can't just get this out of the way. Don't need to play this pre-combat. I'll, I'll just crash in. Opponent is in the Abyss. So, I'm potentially okay. The other thing I can potentially do is if my opponent plays Merktide Regent, I can put... Uh, I will not pay for days. I, uh, my spell is uncounterable. I think that is my opponent just fucking giving up. Uh, anyway, I, I think now my creature is big enough that either I will trade with it, kill it, or beat it with a Ganjo. Alright. Mystic Sanctuary is probably not fast enough. Okay, they put an expressive iteration on top of their deck, and they can't trip into it right now. They can. All right, there is the expressive iteration. Expressive iteration right now is one of the few cards that can make it so that there won't be a ground force of will. Okay, so they can iteration again into a new body. All right, an opponent has gotten salty in chat, typed their lol, and conceded. Okay, uh... That was a knockdown dragout fight. It shouldn't have been. I should have just won game one, but I hunted with the whole, like, day-night thing. Uh, so we're now 2-2 in the league. All right, um, round five. I don't think my mana works with this hand, right? So, like, I have a white-black card and a white-white card that are central to this hand doing anything because this card is often kind of dead. Um, so I think I'm just going to mulligan this hand and try to find something with a bit of a better early game. Um, this fits that category... And I think I'm going to junk the Brule Cathar since it's kind of the worst card in a vacuum. Um, I'm going to end up in this awkward situation where I either fetch a Wastelandable land here or I take myself off of black completely. Um, I think I'll be taking myself off of black completely since we're playing against Delver. That's a fine draw. Um, I think I'll start on Mom. Basic Plains, Mom. I think I need more reps to know for sure. Like what the sequencing is on, like, Esper Sentinel versus Mother of Runes for turn one. There's three mana. I don't control a legendary creature. <clears throat> so that probably means I want to play Thalia on my next turn and use a Ganjo to take out Delver. All right. There's expressive iteration in my opponent's hand now. That's fine. Okay. Let's stay the course and play the Thalia here. Day's effects are going to be so good for my opponent right now, though. Okay, there's a force pitching a Merktide. I'm very happy to see a Merktide go. Um, very awkwardly, though, like, without that Thalia in play, this is not a, an actual removal spell for this Delver. All right, there's the expressive iteration. One we'll probably use to hit their third land drop. Yeah, yeah there's a Scalding Tarn. So, I'm at 13 without a good way to answer this Delver. Yep. So this probably, unfortunately, has to become a land drop now, uh, leaving me without a way to answer that Delver. 
don't like that. I don't like that at all. Like, I can keep this in hand, but if I do so, I can't play Prowlet this turn, or I can't play Asper Sentinel plus Thali as Lieutenant. Alright. I'm gonna try to get this to resolve on one, and cut my opponent off of, you know, a third of their deck. I don't know. Alright, what do you have? Brainstorm. Are we resolving? We are resolving. With this on one, most of the time this should be a safe attack. I think I need to get every point of damage in here that I can, because I think I have transitioned to being in aggro mode, and I'm trying to kill my opponent before they draw a Merktide Regent. Okay, sure. Don't do it. Don't do it. I have so much to live for. Yeah. Eh. Uh, I would have drawn the land for answering this. Taking nine in the air already. Yikes. No real outs at this point, right? I guess killing my opponent next turn is an out, technically. How do I kill my opponent next turn? Play Esper Sentinel Prelate this turn, play Thalia's Lieutenant and Thalia's Lieutenant next turn. Something like that. Uh, it's not a not a great situation. The Murktide Regent means that I can't really attack with this is like a 3-3. Three, three. Right, let's go Sanctum Prelate. I'll put it on 2 for Expressive Iteration. It will give this Pro Blue. And crash in for two with it. Yeah, sure. All right. Opponents at 12. There's only two card types in Graveyard, so I'm taking nine in the air. Uh, it's very hard for me to kill my opponent here through a blocker. Yeah, so like, I play Aethalia as Lieutenant. I have three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten total power. That doesn't beat this. I die in the air. Um, GG's. Um, I, will, I will bring in some Swords of Plowshares here. Probably go Dark Confidants out, since the life loss is a little rough. And then I'll trim one other card. Um, I, I don't know how I feel about these Freebooters. Like, they're kind of an awkward card. They block a Merktide Regent, which is cool. But I don't feel super great about them more generally. I feel like most of my cards are reasonable in this matchup. I just trim one Thalia or something. Um, I will be keeping this hand. Um, I'm not going to have black mana. I need to fetch basic planes here, I think. All right, my opponent thought about their hand for a little while and ultimately kept. Um, let's lead on the Mother of Runes here. And next turn, I have to decide if I'm going to go, like, champion into Wasteland or if I'm just going to play out Athalia. Okay. All right. I don't like it when my opponent leads on a creature. I just want them to spend their turn one cantripping so that I can more safely, like, wasteland and then just continue to build my board. I also just am going to need more mana sources with this hand. All right. Um, without the ability to have a land drop to continue playing these two drops, I think I am just going to try and put a Thalia into play this turn. All right. Uh, opponents pitched a Merktide Regent, which is fantastic for me because I can't really beat that card. All right, a Force of Will goes to the bin off the Prevail. I probably end up taking three this turn. It just takes like a Ponder or something to do that, or an Expressive Iteration even. Oh, I'm just eating a turn two Merktide. Okay, I mean, GG, good league. Um, I am going to play a Thalia this turn, so that if I draw land into creature that answers Merktide Regent or something, I'm more likely to resolve it through an opposing Force of Will effect. Um, but I'm, I'm just dead to this Merktide. And the festivities. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, that deals one to me. I'll take six damage from these creatures this turn. And be pretty close to the point where I can't possibly win. Alright, there's... There's the 6 putting me to 12. I have to draw exactly land into a creature. Uh, I have to draw land into a removal spell for Merktide. Accordingly, I'm always fetching. I'm already vulnerable to Wasteland. Because I have a Wastelandable Wasteland. So I think I just grab Scrub here. That I get both white, white, and black for the future. I think I will play a champion here. Into Athalia's Lieutenant. Throw these creatures. 
uh, a lightning bolt effect already effectively kills me. I am just going to attack with mom. I don't care about protecting any of these creatures. I take half, half my life total as damage already. Maybe more. Like, I might be at two after this turn. Ron has instant sorcery land in there, so they would need, like, a creature or artifact. Well, those are some of the harder types to do. All right, unholy heat my mom. Yep, that's fine. All right, I take five. So I, I can draw an out to Merktide Regent here and not be dead. That is not an out to Merktide Regent, unfortunately. I'll play Mother of Runes this turn. The Kite Sail Freebooter draw next turn. I guess I'm technically not dead. That's a thing. And I'll play a Thalia's Lieutenant as my follow-up. A whole bunch of counters. Um, there's some worlds where I can turn this around. But I'm very much a dog here. Opponent can put a creature into their graveyard, an artifact into their graveyard, um, to kill me here. Um, I am, I'm dead to a lightning bolt effect. Opponent has all four remaining in their deck still, I believe. Yes. Uh, I guess I'm also dead to another Merktide Regent growing the first one, because that's a reasonable interaction. Alright. I am dead. GG's. Uh, so we end up 2-3 in the league. Overall thoughts on the deck list. Deck list is fine. There's just such a gulf between Blue Red Delver in Legacy and everything else right now that like trying to experiment and play other things that aren't Blue Red Delver is uh kind of rough. Um I think this deck doesn't feel good enough against the top decks that I would want to be playing this in an event that mattered, but I think this would be a fine deck to like bring to your FNM or to play in leagues. Um, I will say the delta uh, between hands with this deck is absurdly high, where like my best hands are absolutely insane and my worst hands are clunky and kind of do nothing. Um, if I were going to play this again, I think I'd want to think about the mana base for a little while. I'm um, just kind of moving my creatures out of the way here. So like this deck only has two fetch lands or three basic lands and if you only have room for two fetch lands should you even be playing these or should you just be playing more things like scrub land um that that is a question i don't have the answer to that but i feel like if you're not even going to reach the full set of marsh flats i don't know how much these cards do in helping stabilize your mana base versus just ultimately making it worse um, I do feel like I am light on black sources, and I do feel like the the basic swamp in particular gets in the way of double white one drop, which is relevant since you have 12 of them in game, game one and sometimes more in post sideboard games. Um, without playing more, I'm not sure. I'm also not sure if this deck wants more lands. I felt like I kind of clunked over my mana in a decent number of games. Not an ex unacceptable number of games, but like double Aganjo came up, I think once. Swamp not letting me cast cards came up multiple times. Swamp not letting me cast double one drop, I think came up twice in the league. Um, Yeah. But I, I think the combination of not having any cards to bring in versus control decks and not being good enough against Delver to consistently beat Delver is a combination of things that makes me, like, not excited to play this deck. Not in a, like, oh, this deck is, like, super bad way, but, like, right now, if you don't have a respectable Delver matchup, and I, I don't mean good, but, like, I, I mean, like, if, if you can't keep up with Delver most of the time, you're not playing a Legacy deck that's viable. And I think this creature... Not always being a removal spell is really rough in the Delver world. So those are kind of my ultimate thoughts on this. Um, I also feel like I'm not I don't have enough creatures to actually physically activate Kudro's ability to like sack two humans to like junk a Merktide regent while also keeping a reasonable amount of power. Um, like, I, I don't have card advantage in this deck, and I'm, I'm not counting Esper Sentinel as card advantage, because I think I drew one question mark card over the entire league with it, or, or something like that. Um, yeah, so, 
I think like lack of card advantage, lack of things for control, and not being good against, enough against Delver make me skeptical that this deck is like super viable. But I don't feel bad about this deck ultimately. Um, as far as the sideboard goes, the things that are here are fine, but I wonder if there should be something for control or even more for Delver. I'm also just like not sure how to sideboard because like this is an engine deck where every every human that you board out takes away from the power of some of these cards. Um, so if I were going to play this again, I'd also want to sit down for a while and like map out some sideboarding and really figure out like what am I doing where. All right, folks, I think we're going to go ahead and call it a day there. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, click the like button on your way out. If you're really enjoying my content, please consider doing something to support it, like subscribing to me, uh, becoming a YouTube member, or joining my Patreon. Have a great rest of the day. See ya.